Welcome to another ABS online video. Let's go and find out what we're going to learn today. I love week 22. I really do. Why? I love week 22. I really do. Oh, why? Why? You know what we are looking at. Yes, everything. It is a bit crazy. Um, can we look at everything? Hmm, not really every little thing. But it's a review, isn't it? A review. We try and remember what we've done over the last few weeks. So we had one word, two topics. Really? What were they? Extreme weather. Hmm, that was quite bad. And living in extreme places. So there's the word extreme. It sort of means very, very. So the two topics were extreme weather and living in extreme places. I don't think they were much fun, were they? Mm, seeing the extreme weather I think can be a bit wow. But being too close to the extreme weather, not so good. We had two bits of grammar as well. Similes. They were fun. I did enjoy similes. Have you tried making some yourself? Hmm. And we did identify the complete subject. Okay. Hmm. That was a bit more difficult. Looking at the subject, well, that's usually quite easy. It's just what you're going to talk about in the sentence. But the complete subject, hmm, that was a bit more difficult. Okay, that's what we looked at. So, let's look a bit closer. Find out what you can remember. Where did we begin? It seems like such a long time ago. Uh, no, I can't remember. The weather was bad. Very bad. It was extreme. Hmm. Now, I like it hot. So extreme cold was really not my favourite week. So what cold weather was the worst? I think all cold weather is bad, but what was the worst? We had snowdrift where the wind blows the snow up against anything solid, a house. We had blizzard. Oh, that's bad. Snow and wind at the same time. No, thank you. Hail. That is when pieces of ice fall from the sky. You do not want one of those hitting you on the head. Ice storm. Now this is when it's really super cold. It usually happens at night. You wake up the next morning, everything is covered in ice. And black ice. This is very dangerous. 
It's when there's a very thin layer of ice on the road. You can't see it. You drive along onto black ice and you can slip and slide and crash. Oh dear. Well, none of those were very nice, were they? Which one was the worst? Um, maybe Blizzard. What do you think? So where do the similes go? Super similes. Let's see. Let's have a look at three similes. See if we can find out where they go. Here they are. The snow can hit your face like a whip. The ice can be as thick as a tree trunk. This one is as visible as a ghost. Wow, great similes. Let's have a look. A blizzard. The snow can hit your face like a whip. Wow. Ice storm. The ice can be as thick as a tree trunk. Whew. These sound very bad. And black ice. This one is as visible as a ghost. Wow. Similes are super. If you can use similes when you're writing, they really make your story or your writing come to life. Then it got really wet. Cloud burst. Thunderstorm. Torrential rain. Sleet. Hmm, let's have a look. Cloudburst. That is when there's so much rain in a very short period of time. We all know what thunderstorm is. I'm sure we've seen them. Torrential rain. That's just really heavy. You don't want to be outside. Sleet is bad because it's half rain half snow and usually quite windy as well hmm so rain is not as bad as super cold but yeah you don't want to be outside now can you visualize these can you see them in your head hmm yeah. Okay, it's cold and slippery, like fish from the fridge. One flash is like turning night into day. I think those similes are a bit easier. There we are. I do like the simile about sleep. It's cold and slippery like fish from the fridge. That's great. That sounds really yucky. That's how I think sleet is. Then came super simile week. Hmm. Not many names for wind. So we used more similes. Wow. 60 kilometers per hour is as fast as a cheetah can run. Whew. Wow. A wind that is as fast as a cheetah. Whew. What's that? What did that describe? That was a gale. A gale is as fast as a running cheetah. It got much worse after that. Hmm. Oh my word, that's fast. That's as fast as a speeding bullet. 
Hmm, maybe. Ooh, that's a very fast wind. That was a storm. A storm is faster than a gale. What about a hurricane? That's a big one. They're as fast as... Well, what can you think of? So, we've had a running cheetah and a bullet. But a hurricane, they are as fast as... Oh, ho, ho. Superman, light, kids eating ice cream. They are all very fast. So, similes don't really need to be correct. Nothing is as fast as light, but they help you visualise. They give you a really good idea. And they make it more fun to read and say, Super similes! A hurricane is the worst. They can cause real damage. That's terrible. When you're in a storm or a gale, well, it can be a bit difficult to walk, but the hurricane is a terrible event. A hurricane can make a car fly through the air like a kicked ball. It can just pick it up and throw it away. That is much more than scary. That's really dangerous. People's lives can be destroyed in just a moment. I hope you never experience a hurricane. Then we went to live in extreme places. Of course these extreme places have extreme weather as well. Uh, but we didn't really look at the weather so much. So why? Hmm, this is a mystery to me. Why do people live in the coldest places? Oh my, it sort of looks nice, but I certainly don't want to be walking there. How can people live in the coldest places? Hmm, why? How? It's a mystery. It really is. Now, don't forget the complete subject. It was sometimes a bit difficult to spot. The complete subject is all the words associated with the subject. The subject on its own, we sometimes call the simple subject. Hmm. So, we have the subject, but now it includes articles and adjectives. Okay, that might take a bit of thinking about. How much can you remember? So, here is an example. Right. The nice boy in the blue shirt is singing loudly. Okay. The nice boy in the blue shirt is the complete subject. That is what we are talking about. Boy, shirt. But now we add the articles 
Z. Z. Okay. And we add the adjectives. Nice. Blue. The nice boy in the blue shirt. That's the complete subject. Right. Let's have a look at these extreme places. Living at the South Pole. Well, we all know where it is. And we all know what it looks like. But how can you live there? The polar scientists must take a very difficult medical examination. There are no hospitals down there. Hmm, you've got to be very fit and healthy. So here we've got the polar scientists. We just add the article this time. So they do need some very special places to live. The domed shaped buildings are designed to make sure snow drifts don't bury them. The snow can be blown over the top of them. Very special shape. Some very smart engineers designed those. They are also on legs to allow them to be raised when the snow gets deep. That's really good. So you can lift up your home. Wow. Right. After that, it got hot. Very hot. I do like nice hot sunny days, but sometimes it can be too hot. The vast, hot deserts hold a lot of oil or nothing at all. Hmm. So here's the complete subject. We've got adjectives, vast, hot. And of course, we start with an article. The subject is desert. So there we have the complete subject. So how do the different people survive? Some people are there to get the oil. Some people just live there. Hmm, that's a strange choice. Homes are so important. Of course they are. Anywhere extreme needs special homes. Many houses in desert areas have tall, thin towers. Wow! These clever towers suck cool air in and down into the home. So the sand on the ground is super hot. So they put tall towers up into the air. That's where the air is just a little bit cooler. Clothes, of course, they help. Now we've got a good name here, Tobes. Now, I'm sure if you go to different countries, they might say that word slightly differently. Tobes. Tobes are long cotton shirts that go all the way to the floor. They are usually white to deflect the sun. If it's a darker colour, it absorbs heat. If it's a lighter colour, it will deflect or reflect the heat from the sun. The big, long shirts. They're very, very comfortable.
Right. What do you do if you are not rich but living in the desert? Bedouin people. These are really, really wonderful, amazing people. Bedouin people have lived all across North Africa and the Middle East for thousands of years. They are nomadic people, so do not live in one place for very long. They have always been traders. They buy things in one place and then they walk and walk and walk and they sell those things in another place. This is called a nomadic lifestyle. So how do they move around? Camels are vital to the life of a Bedouin. There is so little water that the best thing to drink is camel milk. Camels are big animals and when they do produce milk there's a lot of it. So camels are vital. Finally, we went far away. Well, I think the desert and the South Pole, they're quite far. But the last place we went to was a bit different. Some people like to live far away from the city. Ah, far out into the countryside, into the forest, into the mountains. It is sometimes called going off grid. Hmm, that's because electricity is provided by a grid. And if you don't want to use electricity, you have to live off grid. Let's see. Why would you live off-grid? Some very brave people just want to live close to the environment. All things in daily life need to be thought about. Yes, if you're living on your own, there's nothing and no one to help you. Where could you live? Well, again, your home is important. A strong and well-designed house is the most important thing. You will also need to know how to repair everything. If your shower is broken, you need to fix it. If you're cooking your own food and something is broken, you need to fix it. You can't just call for someone to come and help you. There's no one there. Now, food, that's important. Food without shops. Small gardens are easy to start but you have to wait for the food. It could take several months. Ah, hold on, he's not in a garden. If you want food now, you have to hunt for it. Water, sounds easy, doesn't it? River water and rainwater can both be collected. That is quite easy. There is a problem. A problem with both of them. Hmm. Well, so maybe water is not so easy. But what's the problem? River water is full of bacteria. Oh dear, that's bad. 
and you need really big buckets to keep enough rainwater. So, maybe it's not so easy. Any water from the river or from the rain, it needs to be boiled so that all the bacteria and dirty stuff is just killed. So could you do it? I know what my answer is. Life in the forest can be so beautiful. Life in the forest can be so healthy. Life in the forest can be such hard work. Mmm, that is not me. Could you live in any of these places? Mmm, right. No more extreme things from now on. Hmm. That was a lot to think about. Oh, this is good. It is all fun from now on. We promise. So, you try and use similes. You try and look for complete subjects. And come back soon to see what all this fun is going to be about. See you soon, guys. Bye. Thank you for watching our video today. Please don't forget, subscribe, and that will help us to make lots more videos for you. Thank you. Bye.